Gone are the days when every video game was either a title in which you would share a screen to play or be relegated to the back seat while someone else adventures through a single player experience. These were replaced with queues and lobbies and friends lists and connection issues. The modern multiplayer experience may serve the fundamental purpose of playing games with others, but does the heart and soul of cooperative gaming come with it? Haze Light's founder and leader, Joseph Fares, who isn't shy about his opinions, doesn't think so. And most of what fuels his disdain for 21st century multiplayer games is wrought with truth and a yearning for better times. It Takes Two is the latest game from the cooperative focus studio out of Stockholm, Sweden, and it goes a long way to infuse trust and dependability between yourself and whomever you decide to play with. Built on the back of the CEO's F the Oscars moment, does this new multiplayer experience truly unravel the secrets of marriage and pull down the walls cemented by modern online co-op? I am Wyatt Fawcett, and this is The First Bite. If you want to have an indelible conversation about the mutation of cooperative experience in video games, it's difficult to start anywhere but the birth of gaming itself. Developed by William Higginbotham and Robert Dvorak, and officially released in 1958, the first real video game was Tennis for Two. Think early Pong. At the core of this invention is the concept of playing these titles with other people. Yes, a world pre-internet mass coverage meant that developers could only focus on things like couch co-op experiences, but does that mean that the connection of the world via the web has cannibalized the original joy of in-person shared gaming experiences? Travel back in time, and most of us have memories of sharing a couch, splitting a screen, or taking turns with those around us. I hesitate to call it a golden age because your opinions on which experience is superior may be different than mine. But there's no ignoring that the nucleus of multiplayer adventure has changed. Before I continue to speak ill of the current environment in which we play video games with one another, let me just fly through all the positives to come from an online gaming service explosion. In the last year and change, our access to the World Wide Web has helped facilitate friendship maintenance, family connection, and even the keeping of one's career or jobs in many cases. There's a foundation of good that comes from connecting things to the internet. Through the intent and invention of massively multiplayer online games, or MMOs, 21st century gamers were united like no other. New friendships were made and distances were dissolved. However, Regardless of how much we have been able to grow and obtain through the use of the web, there's a particular sauce missing in comparison to an adventure with a partner sitting right next to you. It Takes Two has multiple spots throughout the main story in which both players are pitted against each other in small minigames. And this would have been satisfying to participate even if we were online, but playing next to my significant other allowed us to hoot and holler at one another we tried to prod the controller whilst they struggled to tap triangle faster than I could. Sitting down to finally get into the nitty gritty of It Takes Two, the haze like co op journey is always a feat of inundation, making who you play them with practically more important than how or why you take part in them. For their previous title, a bro op game featuring two convicts escaping from prison. I played alongside my forever cooperator, my brother. It was fitting and wonderful, and our hyena-like giggling only paused long enough to concentrate in awe through the bigger and more cinematic moments. But for It Takes Two, a game about two adults, parents, 
who have decided to get a divorce only to be turned into dolls by their daughter, set to face the trials that are led by a relationship self-help book in order to challenge their partnership, I played this with my partner, my significant and insanely uplifting future wife. And I have to say it's going pretty well. Even the designation and choice of which character we chose to play has worked out pretty great. All except for the part where the husband is more natural and fantastically inclined, where the wife is more logical. That reveal through dialogue and cutscenes made us chuckle a little bit. Notably, the construction of meaningful and relevant gameplay elements continues to be Hazelight's brilliant glory. It takes two changes what you are doing all involving working cooperatively with your partner, depending on the level and the setting. You go from using a telekinetic nail and wielded hammer combo in the second level, to a flammable sap and igniting spark shooter combining to blow things up in the third level. It is astounding that Hazelight sustains their excellent gameplay mechanics while fundamentally perpetuating the idea that the entire game must be played together. Meanwhile, huge studios making billion-dollar franchises sometimes struggle to keep their single-player gameplay relevant and interesting. Though the independent Swedish studio of only a few dozen members does sometimes lack the polish in writing or voice acting, It Takes Two's cast does a fairly wonderful job throughout the nearly 20 hours of playtime. The chemistry between the two leads wavers slightly here and there, breaking a bit of the believability of the universe where these two characters have had a relationship for years and are undoubtedly fairly familiar with one another. Luckily, there have been no glaring holes or weaknesses in my own relationship cracked open through the journey thus far, and the entire It Takes Two experience has only gone to further our belief that we work well together as a team. Whether that was their point, well, that's beyond me. Looking back at the fun and adventure, I would be remiss to ignore the fact that the emphasis on functional and emotional relationships and cooperation through life may make it difficult for some to find the right person to play with. Where a way out makes for a buddy action flick event that can and should be shared between yourself and nearly any member of your friends or family circle, it takes two strives very hard and completely succeeds to focus on the trials of a more mature and intimate relationship between two human beings. Perhaps I would even go as far as saying that It Takes Two should not be played with anyone but your partner, though there is a strong argument that could be made for playing alongside your best and closest friend. Evidently, these two Venn diagrams overlap in many cases, as it does with me. Taking the sensation of a truly cooperative environment to another level entirely, my time playing It Takes Two with my actual romantic partner means I'm working with someone that comes to the table with limited video game experience. In this realm, Hazelight strikes another fond and fundamental chord often overlooked in game design. The non-gamer, in comparison to the lifelong gamer, was able to observe and facilitate our co-op just as well as I was. Sure, there are a lot of video gamey tricks that have dug themselves into my psyche over the decades, giving me a slight leg up in terms of noticing particular elements, trends, or otherwise innocuous things around the world. There was never a moment where skill came into play that divided us by any wide margin. Except for the minigames. Where I eventually thought about giving less than 100% effort in order for my partner to have a greater chance of taking a victory, my pride always seemed to get the better of me, and I maintained my undefeated prowess throughout It Takes Two. It could have been easy to design a game to rely on a skill set developed by gamers over years, or even sway the actual reality of the game's premise to prop up a real reason for one player to be more responsible for the technical aspects of puzzle solving than the other player, but they never go there. It truly feels like an equal collaboration, and this becomes essential. 
in both the idea of the cooperative nature of the game and the storylines that is woven throughout. Equally impressive is that as a lifelong player of video games, I was never met with a moment of boredom throughout the evenly distributed duties throughout our journey. It was really a magical ride. My biggest gripe, and one that my partner said we might unlock later in the game, is the lack of celebration. Every time we narrowly avoided defeat, or death, or time things perfectly to traverse a dangerous environment, I wanted to queue up some sort of emote which would see my characters celebrate with theirs. A high five, or a hug, or even just a voice line or a fist pump. It would have been great to be able to display our real life pleasure in our joint success with in-game action. Much like some of the reviews and impressions I have written and talked about on this very show recently, there is little in the actual experience that gets in the way of me recommending It Takes Two to anyone with a puzzle-solving mind, except that there's a very distinct and immovable line in the sand. Unfortunately, if you don't have someone you care about, someone close to you, who you can relate to or replace in the premise of marriage, then It Takes Two will lack nearly all of the potency and perfection that it serves up. Yes, please play this game, if you have the means to do so with a person that matters to you. But I have to strongly suggest avoiding it if those parameters can't be met. I want to give a shout out to Hazelight and It Takes Two. This game was so much fun to play with my partner, and I love games that let us sit on the same couch and enjoy a shared experience together. I want to give a shout out to all the people that have listened, followed, subscribed, uh, gave us a shout out on social media, suggested games that we should play and write impressions about. I love all of you, and this is truly such a fun and enjoyable experience from start to finish. I know we're only on episode 5, but I'm so excited to keep going to bring new and exciting games or maybe even peripherals and, and actual technology to the forefront. We are working on some other shows besides this one. Um, th that will be revealed soon enough. And again, I cannot thank you all enough for going to Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, and subscribing to this show. It really means a lot to me, uh, my family. My partner, who is now intimately involved in this process, thanks to our adventures through It Takes Two. And I cannot wait to talk to you guys again. If you have a suggestion for something that we should try, or maybe a topic of a show that we should talk about, definitely feel free to hit me up on Twitter, which is the easiest place to find me. I'm at Wyatt Fawcett. I will put the link. In the show notes, say hello. I love you all. Have an amazing weekend.